Seahawks fans, wherever you may be, welcome back for another edition of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. Join your host, Bill Alpstead, and co-host, sports writer and football analyst, Keith Myers, as we talk Seahawks football. fans. Welcome back to another edition of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Alvstead, sitting down with Keith Myers. Keith, welcome into the show. We're talking Seahawks football. Yes, we are. And we're talking about a win this week um, against, it's a road win against the San Francisco 49ers divisional game. Really important game. Could not afford to drop this one. Um, and for the first I'd say um, 25 minutes yeah, of the 60-minute game. It did not look like the Seahawks were going to be competitive in this game, but um, the defense kept a minute, and the offense turned it around and, and took over, and and um, good things happened. Yeah, it's funny that first uh, you know 10, 15 minutes or so, I got on Twitter and I and I read like three or four comments, and I immediately got off Twitter. And I, I didn't get back on because it was it was not going to be good. Everyone was kind of in a bad mood. The Mariners were starting to lose. Uh, the Seahawks looked like they were going to go down early. And um, people were kind of bailing already. And I was like, no way. Come on. This is just this is way too early. So, uh, yeah, um, the Seahawks had their first first down um, with five minutes left in the second quarter. And the defense gave up the opening touchdown. To the 49ers, and that was like, this could be one of those days. Um, and then the the defense shut out the 49ers on the next eight drives, and the Seahawks offense started moving the ball and, and scoring touchdowns. And uh, Collins came in and added a little punch to the running game. And Russell Wilson had like the most amazing spin move touchdown that you'll ever see. I mean, it's just one of those one of those games where it just kind of finally it kind of all came together, and then okay. the 49ers lost Garoppolo, and after that, Trey Lance came in, and we kind of talked about this before uh, before this game as it being possible that mm -hmm. he might come in, and what would happen if the Seahawks beat the 49ers at Santa Clara, and well, what would Kyle Shanahan do in the future with with Trey Lance? And I think we're we might be seeing that actually happening. Yeah, I mean, you look at, I mean, Garoppolo got pulled because of a pulled calf. He had a strained calf, and so they went ahead and and put Lance out there. Um, but it's not like Lance was significantly worse than Garoppolo. Um, in fact, he was significantly better in some ways. Um, in some but, ways, yeah. You can see in, the future, for sure. Yeah. Um, now, part of that is... Uh, you know, they had the one really bad miscommunication by on the defense by Seattle that gave up a 76-yard walk-in touchdown um, to Lance. And if you take that play away, his stats look significantly worse. Um, but he, his, what he, what he brings them with his legs is a dynamic um, athlete that they haven't had since the first couple Kaepernick years. And, you know, it's going to be interesting with him. I mean, he, the talent is there. Um, yeah. They're just so. going to have, listen, here's the situation I think with the 49ers and the writing's kind of on the wall a little bit with them is that they're not going to be that great of a team this year. Now they might squeak into the playoffs somehow as like the fourth team out of the NFC West. You could put Seattle in that boat. Maybe you could even put the Rams in that boat the way that, that uh, the Cardinals are looking these days. But um, I think it would be wise for them to actually kind of go in on Trey Lance right now and just ride it out. I mean, it's mm -hmm. going to be a kind of a crazy three or four games um, in their schedule, and it is what it is. But um, I think they need to do it because – Garoppolo's ceiling is just not that high. It just isn't. And, know. you know, I'm, I'm not trying to pull for the 49ers here. I'm just saying if I was them, I would make this investment. Yeah. Um, I mean, so Garoppolo's line in the first half was uh, 14 of 23 for 165 yards, one touchdown, one interception, but a long of 26. Yeah. 
And it's they, an okay stat line. It's, a, it's kind of a mediocre. It's like his stat line for every game. Yeah, and it's a rating of 79.1. Now, back in the day, um, when defenses were allowed to play defense, you know, that would have been a pretty good stat line. But they're not. And that's really just not going to cut it. Um, I mean, He's compared certainly not going to take over the game. I mean, you, <laughs> my fear, and this was real at the time. I think you and I were texting. I was like, "Oh, sh- oh, crap!" You know, Trey Lance is coming in. It go go figure that he appears in a Seahawks game and watch him just go down and you know win this game or whatever. It didn't happen, but I'm not thinking about that with with Garoppolo. I'm thinking about that with Lance. Like that's a guy that can actually do some damage at some point. And yep. You kind of he, let you, you let that guy just. He needs he needs to lumps. play. Yeah. He needs to play. He needs he's going to take some lumps. He's going to make some mistakes. He's going to it's going to look ugly at times, but that's part of the maturation process with the rookie quarterback. I mean, it was that way in Seattle with um, Russell Wilson. Those first you know four or five games were not all that pretty, and then so things kind of came together. Let's so. stop talking about their quarterback and start talking about our quarterback. Like what our, happened? Yay, Wilson fastest to 100 wins in NFL history. That's the yep. banner. He got <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so fa- the the fastest quarterback to 100 wins in NFL history and he is the only or the only quarterback other than Peyton Manning to reach 100 wins in his first 10 seasons. Manning ended up with 105 in his first 10 season, which means Wilson needs five more wins to match that 6 Wow. Two. That's just that such record. a significant thing, you know, and I heard also to the Iron Man type stuff that they were talking about in the, in the broadcast where Wilson had, had reached his 165th regular season uh, consecutive start and uh, that it's fifth already fifth all time, um, for a quarterback, um, in, in consecutive starts, which is just remarkable, really, when you think about when he started, when you mm-hmm. think about some of the things he was saying early uh, in training camp that first summer where he was just like, I want to be great, you know, no time for sleep, all these like, you know, silly things now that, that we assumed were just kind of just self pep talk type things. And they were, they but were, he meant them. <laughs> You know, he meant them what when he when he was saying them, and it, he came to actualize those things. It's just remarkable. Yeah, Wilson's been fantastic for Seattle, and I know there are people out there that, for some reason, one reason or another, they don't like him, and I'm, I don't get it. Um, I don't understand. He's been easily the best quarterback this franchise has ever had. Um, easily, he, like I mean. Matt Hasselbeck would be number two, and honestly, it's just it's not even close. It's not even that close. And I'm and I'm a Hasselbeck fan, so yeah, don't um, sure, 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 sure. And uh, it's and you're right, it's not even close. Like Wilson's just he's just head and shoulders better than than the other quarterbacks that this franchise has had. Um, and yet, some people just continue to talk about him like he's not very good. I, yeah. I don't, well, I, guess I mean, all you have to do that. really is a, I mean, just look it, it. he had two more touchdowns in this game. No, no more turnovers. Doesn't have any turnovers on the year. Um, that, that masterful spin move. I, I just amazed at that at, you know, in his 10th year, um, just the reaction, just the instant reaction, seeing that guy on the edge and spinning and going underneath that and coming out on the other side and literally seeing Swain there in the in the front corner of the end zone and making that throw and in, in, in all in the same motion. I mean, it was just all kind of coordinated chaos into that pass, and it was perfect. And I was yeah. just like, man, are we lucky to watch that? Well, and it, yeah, I mean, that's that's what the thing about that whole play that amazed me is you're you're you you've got pressure and you're like right in your face and you're making the spin move in order to to avoid getting sacked and yet you're still know where your receiver is downfield to get the ball out get the ball where your guy can catch it and it's not going to get picked yeah um and make it that touchdown i love the Dwayne brown quote Dwayne brown quote i was speechless man i just went up to him and i said you're a bad mfer (laughs) <laughs> end of quote <laughs> that's the quote 
that's you it. know that's, that's Dwayne Brown, you know, and and so it is it is what it is. It's crazy. So so the, the cool thing about this game, Keith, it, and it was such an, an important game, and I think we kind of diminished that heading into the game, not kind of wanting to to jinx this whole thing or whatever, but season's on the line when you're one and two and you go into a adversary uh, stadium and you got to have a must win in the fourth game mm-hmm. of, the, of the season. It's just kind of crazy. Um, and so they ended up finding a way to do that. They really did come together. Um, it looked sketchy early and I have to have the, give them credit for having both sides of the ball come together. Really? Um, the defense came together. Um, they did put a little bit of pressure on Garoppolo early. Um, they were able to get some stops in the running game. I thought the the pass defense in this game was actually pretty stellar. Um, uh, they had five. To, they had nine pass defenses and, and, and one and interception. We need to talk about that because there were some. There were a pair of significant personnel changes uh, made in yes. this game, and they paid dividends. First of all, um, Flowers was benched in favor of Sidney Jones. Yeah, and Cody second, Barton and Trey Flowers played, played a combined zero snaps in this yep. game. And um, the other one is that uh, Ugo Amadi lost his most of his snaps to Ryan Neal, the backup strong safety slash yeah. cornerback slash do everything defensive yeah. back. And I got to tell you, Ryan Neal played a great game. He, yeah, no, he, he was uh, he was the extra dime defender in this game. Played twenty four defensive snaps, thirteen on third down, mm-hmm. and Neil alone contributed to at least four third down stops. A couple yeah. of those against George Kittle. I thought mm-hmm. another guy that played really well was Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams have a, had a heck of a hit on Kittle to prevent a reception uh, later on in the game when the kind of the game was still available for San Francisco to make it, you know, somewhat yeah. doable. And um, Jamal played a great game. Uh, Taylor had his third sack in four games as a Seahawk. I just thought overall it was a really good, solid performance. So Taylor had his third sack, and he had some other good moments. Um, he also did, he rolled an ankle, didn't he? he and, did. and so and, he is questionable for Thursday. But we'll yeah. Have to watch that. Um, so at the, at the end of the game, the Seahawks had that fourth down stop um, on the outside stretch zone to the right. And, you know, uh, Jordan Brooks got the press for that stop because he was the guy who came up and make, made the tackle. But that play was made by Alton Robinson, who was playing the Sam linebacker spot in Taylor's spot, setting the edge on the outside and forcing the back, Trey Sermon, inside where um, where Jordan Brooks could go get that tackle. And it, I'm sorry, that was just a fantastic play that doesn't show up in the stat sheet. No, most fans won't even notice, but it's a guy – He's used to being a defensive end. They're asking him to play Sam linebacker. It's not like his natural thing, but he did his job extremely well, and it paid off. Mm-hmm. And when when everybody does their job, and they don't try and freelance and do other people's jobs, uh, that's how good defenses are are played. And uh, that happened more in this game than it has in the previous two. Guys just did their took care of their responsibility and didn't try and freelance and didn't try and like go for the big play by getting themselves out of position. And so let me ask you this: I know that that we had a lot on the line in this game, but mm-hmm. do you believe you know when the, when I say that the Seahawks shut out the 49ers offense on the on the next eight drives after the initial touchdown? <laughs> is that more? Uh, in favor of the Seahawks, or is that an indictment against the 49ers right now? I don't think it's an indictment against the 49ers. Their their offensive line is still good. They're, um, I liked what I saw from Trey Sermon in this game. They've um, Ayuk and, and Samuel at, at wide receiver are dynamic. Kittle's one of the best ever. Um, I mean, they have some issues at quarterback, but Garoppolo's, you know, he's not terrible. You're not running out... Um, you know, Kelly Stoffer or Dan McGuire. Sorry, Seahawks fans. Um, wow. um, right. You're not, you're not running those guys out. Um, Stan Gelbaugh. There you go. Uh, God, you're just oh. pulling them all out. They were all in the te- same. They were all in that 92 team. They were all bad. Uh, 
<laughs> but you know what I mean? Like they, they've got the pieces to, yeah. to do stuff. Well, um, the good news is, I mean, in prior games, the Seahawks have really allowed a lot of explosive plays, limited the 49ers to just six in this game, mm-hmm. um, which it was quite an improvement for them. Um, George it Kittle had a, had a pass, a couple other guys, they, they, they threw to their tight end. Nobody had ever heard of on that 21 yard opening touchdown to Willie. Um, Debo Samuel had a 26 yard pass reception in the first quarter. Trey Sermon had a 15 yard run in the third quarter after things were kind of settled. You mentioned the 76 yard touchdown pass to Samuel with 2:22 left in the third quarter, and then the scramble, 13 yard scramble by Trey Lance with a, a minute 47 left. That was the limit of the bigger plays in this game, and I thought that's a pretty decent p- production from our defense considering yeah. where we've come from. Yeah, I mean, the defense did its job. The offense um, struggled early, then settled in and, and did its job. And then you look at the stat sheets and you're thinking, wow, this offense really had a rough day. Like, um, you know, I mean, Wilson had, what was it, 146 passing yards? Um, 149 passing yards. Uh, and you're like, wow, that's terrible. But the truth is that uh, uh, once they got going, the offense was able to move the ball and score points. But they didn't need to go and score a lot of points. They had a, mm-hmm. you know, Cannon had that fumble and gave the Seahawks the ball down near the end yeah. zone. And yeah, and I mean, there was a there was a full quarter left when when I I think I texted you. I said, okay, run the clock. Yeah, you know, and that's kind of where we were at for for a full quarter of this game. Anyway, it was just mm-hmm. kind of, you know winding this thing down. So, um, Freddie Swain, you know, I think. Freddie Swain is actually stepping up this year, considering Eskridge was going to come in and take his job. Swain was going to get kind of pushed out, essentially, as the fourth or fifth guy and limit his opportunities. But he's really taken advantage of of his targets this year. Yeah, Um, he is. He's getting in. He's getting involved. He's playing well. He's getting open, making catches. Um, They're getting him touches on those end around uh, plays. Enough that when they fake it, because he and he starts making that run, that guys are moving. Uh, so he just seems more dependable than David Moore. Yeah, and I don't know what it was about David Moore. I don't have really anything against him. He had a few years of of okay production lines, but it just seemed like Freddie Swain seems to have the ability to just be a little bit more steady. Than, and I think that's what it is because David Moore would have that big play down the sideline or whatever. He'd make that big catch and then he would disappear for like three quarters and he wouldn't even hear his name, but he was playing the whole time um, type of thing. So he would, yeah, it was just weird. Whereas so Freddie now, Swain manages to stay involved. So now we get um, a guy like, and then we might not get him back for this next game coming up, but Eskridge, you know, at some point, is going to make an impact on this offense mm-hmm. and we haven't even seen it yet. Yeah. And we, it seems like we, it's something that we need. Like it's uh, you know, you don't want to depend on uh, Tyler Lockett week in week out, especially Tyler was a little banged up in this game. Maybe not quite as effective. Metcalf had a good game, but it'd be nice to have that, that second piece where it's just a guy that's like shifty dynamic can create his own, um, can create his own plays. And we just don't have, you know, that we, we have it a little bit, but it'd be nice to just round that out. Yeah. I mean, part of, I mean, this is a team that has three wide receivers right now. Um, they run with, you know, Swain, Lockett and, and Metcalf. And if they need other guys out and routes, it's the tight ends. They yeah. have three receivers. Um, you know, Penny Hart gets a snap here or there, but he, they don't. They clearly. I mean, he hasn't been part of their plan. He's not um, a guy that they're leaning on. They need another guy. Uh, if nothing else is just to help, if somebody you know gets banged up and you need another uh, another body, like you need someone that you can depend on out there. And they need Eskridge back. Like I, I really do think they need him back. Um, so you mentioned uh, Alex Collins earlier, but I want to circle back to that because the Seahawks put um, Rashad Penny on injured reserve um, and uh, basically saying that Collins is the the number two back in this game. And he almost out-touched Carson. Carson had 13 touches to Collins' 10, but 
Collins also had 44 yards to Carson's 30. Yeah, right. Plus a couple um, of receptions for 34 yards for Collins as well. I thought Collins really actually outplayed uh, Carson and, and and came in at a specific moment where we were ineffective running the ball in the first quarter. And mm-hmm. Collins came in and started running the ball really hard, finding a little crease here and there, a little shiftiness, a little lateral quickness that that um, that just isn't present with Carson. It was just enough to kind of just get it going just a little bit. And I thought yeah. it was a difference in this game, really. Carson is, I still believe, is the more talented back top to bottom. Um, but what Collins brings is a little bit better vision of like the backside and the cutback lanes and those oh, kind of things. Touchdown run was beautiful. It was. It was fantastic, and that's the kind of stuff that um, you know the the team is going to need more of that. They need uh, because they're not everything is going to be perfectly blocked in front. Um, you've they've invested in pass blockers in guys like. Um, Jackson and the, whether it be Shell or Abuhi at right tackle and um, and even uh, Dwayne Brown at uh, left tackle, They're, these guys are are more pass blockers than the mauling run blockers that they've had in the past. So you're gonna have to, you know, pick through some traffic in order to get uh, your yards sometimes. And that vision is something that Collins brings to the offense that is really helpful. And right now it's it's showing up in his productivity. You know, one other player, and, and we can just kind of end this thing, but um, Colby Parkinson came in and played 23 snaps. Now, that was coming off of an injury at the beginning of the year, didn't see anything, came in, activated, brought him back onto the roster right away after being activated, and then had 23 snaps. <clears throat> I think that's significant because um, Gerald Everett wasn't available in this game and mm-hmm. may not be available in, in the next game, although chances are it looks like he, he will, but... Um, I think Colby Parkinson, nonetheless, will probably get some opportunities in the next game just because I think the Rams are a little susceptible in the red zone to a larger receiver, and we'll just have to see how that plays out. But um, I thought that you'd mentioned three wide receivers with Swain. Um, Parkinson's got a real opportunity there, um, depending on what Eskridge does and then what Swain does later in the year. But he's essentially a larger, bigger receiver and seeing him out there you can really see the height i mean at six seven and a half or whatever it is he's huge 253 he is huge but he looks like a guy that can move and if if we can somehow utilize that that's another weapon that i think russell wilson that'll help open up that that passing game for them yeah i'm he's a guy that uh that has a lot of he's very intriguing he's we'll put it that way like there's a lot there to like but We've yet to see him mm-hmm. make an impact in a game. Yeah. And so similar, um, to, similar to Eskridge, we just don't know yet, but it, those are nice yeah. weapons to have, you know, um, anything else on this 49er game? It's, it's just, a, it's one of those games where it's like, wow, we really needed that. We needed yeah. that. And it'll really come in handy to have that game as a win when we're, you know, at the, at the back end of the season for sure. Absolutely. I mean, I was looking at this and and I was like, the closer we got to game time, the less comfortable I felt. And then that first quarter when the offense just could not get out of its own way, I was like, this season's going downhill. Like they're going to, if they lose this game and then they, on Thursday night, they lose to the Rams. And so then you're, then I'm looking at, you're looking at, oh God, they're, they're one in four. This would have been, this would be the first season of of recording shows with you where we've had to f- talk about losing and strategy around draft picks again and and all that and looking forward to the future and who do we play now and who do we sit and all those kind of conversations mm-hmm. while they're 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 great conversations to have nobody wants to have them um yeah i mean we we'd be looking at that we'd be looking at you know um as a team do you do you do you trade Bobby Wagner now and get a pick for someone who's, who desperately wants a playmaker? Um, you know, just these things that are just absurd, but we'd probably end up talking about them before uh, the trade deadline. But they get this win, it's a, it, and it's it's such an important win because now, yeah. now regardless of division, what happens... It's a division win. Yeah, regardless of what happens on Thursday, right? 
um, they could be two and three, but through the roughest yeah. part of their schedule. Yeah, um, well, and you you damaged the 49ers. Uh, the Rams happened to lose. They damaged so themselves. The, 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 the only team that's really in the driver's seat right now is Arizona, which and they're still susceptible. But they well, look, look what they good. did last year. They look so good, though. I Look what know. they did last year. They started out hot. They played yeah. really well for the first I know. Like, I think six they're games. This year, honestly. And everyone's like on the Arizona bandwagon, and then they just fell to pieces. I yeah. I've been on their bandwagon though for for a couple of years, and and the and and this off season, I really took took a look at them yeah, as being legitimately kind of able to maybe take the next step. And it really did come down to Kyler Murray and. And we can talk about these guys later on, and I'll talk about them a little bit in the Rams um, development show here as we as we come up. But um, I think that they're they're in the driver's seat right now, whether you like it or not. They well, are. they are. I mean, they're the team. They're the team with with the four wins. They're in first place. But um, are they the best? Are they, Those are are they the best? Wins. Are they the best team in the division today? Uh, that by today. record. By record, well, well, you did. I don't know if you watched any of that Rams game, but I did. They beat the Rams. They yeah, beat the Rams. True, and they, but Solid. they, d- despite the four and zero, they lost to the Vikings. Um. Yeah. Right, and well, you know the Jets won this weekend too. I mean, what's what's your point? <laughs> it's, it's some you know teams show up sometime and. And sometimes they don't. And, and I think, you know, we've seen our own team, the, the Seahawks, you know, should have beaten a couple of teams that they ended up folding against. So yeah. true. And anyway. so there's some of that with the Rams. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm not convinced that Arizona is, they're just, they don't seem like a world beater. They are, I want are, to believe you. They are, are they good? Sure. But I still think that the Rams are the better team. I think it was a case where Arizona had things fall their way and they played a really good game and the Rams didn't play well. The Rams didn't, didn't have an answer. They just they just didn't play well. Um, Aaron Donald wasn't his normal disruptive self and Jalen Ramsey made some mistakes. And, you know, when your stars aren't starring it up, um, you know, you're going to struggle. The difference in that game was Kyler Murray. I mean, yeah. without Kyler Murray, you put any almost any other quarterback except for maybe Russell Wilson, maybe another couple guys into that offense on that day, and they lose that game. But Kyler yeah. Murray was the, so much the difference; they blew out the Rams because of his play. It was it was crazy. Yeah, and I don't know. I'll, we'll we'll yeah. save that discussion for sure. another day. But um, yeah, they aren't um, they aren't a team that. I'm scared of, at least not yet. All right. So let's get out of here. Let's, let's get out of here. Good show. Thank you. Follow Keith on Twitter at Myers NFL. I'm at all, uh, NW Seahawk. I was going to say something else and I just completely, completely missed that. Um, <laughs> and uh, at Hawks Playbook, SeahawksPlaybook.com has all the shows. Follow us on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube and subscribe. So until next time. Go Hawks. Hawks. Seahawks Playbook Podcast listeners, thanks for joining us for another edition of the show. You can find us on Twitter. Bill is at NW Seahawk. Keith is at Myers NFL. And the show is at Hawks Playbook. You can listen and subscribe to the show at SeahawksPlaybook.com.